Hello, and thank you for joining me again in Annie Stories. Today, I will be reading a tale of Japanese origin that had been retold by Teresa Pierce Williston. So, without further ado, let us begin our journey of Japanese tales. The Stolen Charm. A little boy sat on the sand at the foot of an old pine tree. Pish, pish, whispered the pine tree as the spring wind swept through its needles. Swish, swish, said the waves as they chased each other up to the yellow sand. Swish, swish, said each wave as it threw its armful of white foam at the foot of the boy. The boy heard the whisper of the pine tree and the splash of the waves, but he looked far out over the water. He was looking for the white foam fairy who came each day to play with him. At last, she came, riding on the top of the highest wave. In her hand, she held something which shone in the sun like a drop of dew. She sat down on the sand with the boy. For a long time, she sat watching the waves and the seabirds and the soft white clouds. At last, she said, "Little boy, we have played here together for many weeks. Now." I must go away to another land, so I have come to say goodbye. Do you see this tiny silver ship I have brought you? It is a charm and will always keep you well and happy. The boy looked up to say goodbye, but could see only the rainbow that gleamed in the spray of the waves. She was gone, but close by his hand lay a tiny silver ship that shone in the sun like a drop of dew. The boy picked it up and walked slowly to his home. See, mother," said he, "here is a tiny silver ship which the foam fairy gave to me. That is a charm, my boy," said his mother. "You must always keep it, for it is very precious." Then he showed the charm to his two pets, the furry little fox cub and the fuzzy little puppy. They sniffed and blinked at it very wisely. As though they knew all about it. Weeks passed, and the spring warmed into summer. One evening, the boy became very ill. His mother went to fetch the silver charm, for that would make him well again. It was gone. Who could have taken it? The furry little fox cub and the fuzzy little puppy were very sad. They sat in the dusk and blinked at the fireflies flashing among the trees. They blinked at the stars in the faraway sky. Their sharp little noses twitched as they smelled the sweet dew on the flowers. They thought of their poor sick master and wondered how they could help him. At last, the fox cub said, "I believe the ogre must have stolen the charm. Let's go and see." "Oh dear, I'm afraid of ogres," said the puppy with her tail between her legs. How would we ever get it if he did have it? Come along, we'll find a way," said the fox cub. They crept slowly along the path which led up the hill to the house of the ogre. On the way, they met the rat. "Where are you going?" squealed the rat. "We are going to the house of the ogre to see if he has stolen our master's charm," said the fox cub. "And I don't know how we'll ever get it if he has it." Whined the puppy with her tail between her legs. "I'll go too," said the rat. "I know how you can get it. Just you wait here by this tree until I creep up to the house. When I am by the window, you make a dreadful noise and then run for your lives. I'll meet you at the foot of the hill." "Oh dear, I'm afraid," sniffed the puppy. "Never mind, he won't hurt you," said the fox cub. They waited by the pine tree until the rat was close to the house. Then they made a noise like all sorts of monsters and turned and ran for their lives. By and by, the rat came too. "I know where it is," he cried. "He has the charm and he keeps it in the pocket of his sleeve. I know it is there, for when you screamed, he felt in his pocket the first thing 
to see that it was safe. Now we'll wait till he gets over being frightened, and then we'll go back and get it. Soon, they were by the pine tree again. Then the rat said, Now, you fox cub, change yourself into a little boy, and puppy into a little girl. Then both go in and dance for the ogre. Dance for your lives, and keep on dancing until I am down the hill again. Oh dear, I'm so afraid of ogres, said the puppy. Never mind. Dance for your life and he won't hurt you, said the fox cub. Then the rat hid himself in the folds of the girl's long dress. The boy and the girl walked up to the door of the house. Please, Mr. Ogre, may we dance for you? they asked. Now the ogre was very tired and very cross, so a dance was just what he wanted to see. He said, Yes, but if you don't dance well, I'll eat you. They danced their very best, and the ogre was so interested that he did not see the little rat slip from the girl's dress and crawl under his sleeve. He did not hear the rat gnaw through the cloth, nor see him as he slipped away with a tiny ship in his mouth. When the rat was safely down the hill, the girl and the boy suddenly disappeared. The ogre never knew what became of them. Like a flash, they were only a fox cub and a puppy, running and tumbling down the hill as fast as they could. They thanked the rat for his help, and then ran to their master with the silver ship. Dear master, they cried, here is your charm. Now you will be well once more. Sure enough, the boy did get well and live long after the furry little fox cub was a grown-up fox and the fuzzy little puppy was a grandmother dog. But the dog still puts her tail between her legs whenever you talk about ogres. The End Thank you for listening. I hope you enjoyed this short tale with me. Please stay tuned for another one tomorrow. Goodbye for now and see you again in my next video.